isa pagsulong narito ako para sa pagwawas ko magdaluyong narito ako para ang galat na lahat na pulo magiging muon na buo.
Bayans, magandang gabi naman po sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas. Mapagpalayang pagbati sa ating lahat. Welcome to the National Democratic Online School, the Lenin Serie with Tito Jo. We will have this Serie till the next many weeks. So make sure to note this on your calendars and click that notification bell for updates on our Facebook group, ND Line Online. And you could also watch this out on the Facebook page of Anak Bayan Europe. Please, please invite comrades and your friends, your family to participate in this event dahil mas masayang mag-aral kapag mas marami, hindi ba? So this month, uh, we are celebrating the 150th birthday of Vladimir Lenin, a former premier of the Soviet Union that emphasized the importance of arming ourselves with theory and practice. That is why ND Online or the National Demo Democratic Online School have come up with this series to celebrate that with a series of um, educational discussions. Today, we will be discussing the task of the youth leagues written by Lenin on October 2, 1920, which, a uh, which aims to, to motivate the revolution revolutionary youths in Russia in its task and responsibilities given the general backwardness of Russia and the interventionist of war being waged by anti-communist powers. Now, um, before we start, general house rules lang mga kasama. Please, please, um, um, uh, sa mga kasama natin sa Skype, please um, uh, turn your microphones off, um, disable your camera para we can avoid disruptions and feedbacks uh, and background noises. If you have questions to, um, to, our, uh, t to, um, to Tito Jo later on, just uh, please drop it on the comment box. And later after discussion, we will have questions and answer portion, per portions in which... Uh, Tito Jo can answer that, no? So, uh, mga ka-revolutionary youth, ano pang hinihintay natin? Tara na at mag-aral. Simulat ng dis ang discussion na ito. Please, uh, may we welcome a uh, Filipino writer, activist, internationalist, and NDFP consultant, Professor Jo Masison. Um, hi, Tito Jo. Kamusta po? Mapagpalayang uh, hapon sa inyo. Ang mabuti naman, ang kalagayan ko. Uh, Ngayon, eh, gusto ko magpaabot ng uh, uh, pagbate uh, sa ating mga taga-pakinig. Uh, magandang gabi sa mga nasa Maynila at uh, an, uh, magandang hapon sa mga kababayan na narito sa Europe. Uh, Malap na revolusyonaryong pagbate sa inyong lahat. Yeah, and take um uh Tito Jo, uh before we start, no, we have a couple of questions prepared about NDFPs. Um uh, pwede bang matanong muna to sa inyo po? Hello Tito. Sorry mga kababayan, technical difficulties lang po ang um uh, uh ating kinakaharap. Onting break, technical breaks lang po muna tayo, mga kababayan. Up. 
pagkakaisa Pagsulong narito ako Para sa pagwawas ko Pagdaluyong narito ako Para ang galat na lahat na pulo Magiging muong na buo. Hello and we are back now no um we are nagpapawin po kami 
sa uh, maliit na technical difficulties na nangyari kanina lang, no? So, magbabalik tayo. Tito Joe, um, few questions lang before we start about NBFP. Pwede ko bang maitanong to isa inyo? So, um, Tito Joe, um... Sinasabi nila, um, the critics are saying that NDFP or the National Democratic Front of the Philippines is no longer needed uh, or relevant. Uh, totoo ba ito? Sorry, Tito. Um, hello? Okay. Ayan, ayan po. Rinig na po kayo ngayon, Tito. Pwede na po ulit. Kinakailangan ng National Democratic Front of the Philippines um, at uh, relevant sa um, uh, lahat ng puwersa at mga lahat ng dapat gagawin para isulong ang kilusang pagpapalaya uh, sa sampay ng Pilipino. Ang uh, NDF ang naniniyak na yung pinakamalawak na hanay ng uh, mga makabayan at uh, progresibong puwersa Uh, mags magsasama-sama at kumilos ng sabay-sabay laban sa itinuturing na kaway. Uh, kailangan meron kang uh, malawak na, na puwersa para uh, uh, i-isolate mo yung, ano, yung kaway tulad ng Rehimeng Duterte. Uh, siya yung ilagay mo sa makitin na lugar para madaling talunin. At uh, ano ibig sabihin nito? Yung Uh, Siyempre ang partido, ano rin, tinitingnan niya na meron siyang pinagbabatayan na, na wide ground. No? Uh, tinitiyak niya na yung aliansa ng mga manggagawa at magsasaka ay uh, nabubuo at napapalakas. Uh, pero hindi sapat yun na uh, yung, uh, may concentration ang parte sa ganong uh, gawain. Uh, pero dapat may organisasyon, may formasyon na naniniyak na yung uh, batayang puwersa ng mga manggagawa at magsasaka, ano pa yung madadagdagan ng puwersa sa pamagitan ng pag-akit sa mga tinatawag na panggitnang uh, puwersa. Mga panggitnang puwersa yung mga ano, nasa uh, yung panlunsod na uh, peti burgues, urban peti bourgeoisie, no? At yung tinawag na middle bourgeoisie, o kung minsan tawagin ng pampansang burgesia, yung, uh, uh, itong dalawang saray na ito, eh, sila bumubo yung sa tinatawag na, na middle class you know, sa Pilipinas. At uh, isa pang ano, ginagawa ng NDF, ano yun, inaalam niya yung mga uh, labanan sa hanay ng mga reaksyonaryo, mga split nila. Nang sa gayo, mapakinabangan ng kilusang revolusyonaryo. Ma ma kasi yun eh, nakakapangpahina sa kaaway. Alam nyo, yung mga reaksyonaryo, sari-sari yan. At may banga yan sa hanay nila. <coughs> yung, um, ano yung, uh, ang tinawag na, na kaaway ay yung pinaka-reaksyonaryo. Pinaka-reaksyonaryo. Kaya ano yun, uh, additional resource ng kilusang revolusyonaryo yung pag-alam sa mga hatian o split sa loob ng sahanay ng mga reaksyonaryo para ano yon makita mo yung ano yung uh, yung kahinaan ng mga nagkaharing uri may pero siya lang kanya eh kontradiksyon sa hanay nila kasi mga masisiba yan at uh, sa masiba sa kayamanan at masiba siyempre sa kapangyarihan dahil sa pamamagitan ng pagtangan ng kapangyarihan uh, napapalaki nila yung uh, uh, kayamanan nila sa pamamagitan ng pangungurakot uh, ngayon um, uh, may ibang ibang may ibang uh, iba, ibang tipo ng revolusyonaryong puwersa may partido tinitiyak niya ang prinsipal na tungkulin ng partido ay kwan yung pamumuno ng uring manggagawa ang um, as, as siya yung uh, 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 nagtatakda ng direksyon ng uh, pagkilos uh, dahil ang uring manggagawa ang siyang makauring uh, instrumento 
para sa kalaunan matutupad, hindi lamang pambansang kalayaan, kundi uh, sosyalismo. Um, ngayon, dahil na nakakaraming uri ang, uh, ang, mang, ang mga uring magsasaka, tinitiyak ng uh, uh, mga ng, uh, uring mga gawa na uh, kakasabay uh, kapartner ka niya sa paglaban sa nagaring sistema. Yung uh, ang, pagkatapos, ang may special na tungkulin ang uh, hukong bayan ng NPA, New People's Army, uh, siya yung uh, binubuo uh, para sa kalaunan matatalo yung armadong puwersa ng kabila na yung um, pwers, yung ano yung uh, pangunahing instrumento ng nagaharing uri at buong sistema uh, para uh, manatili yung sistema ng pangapi pagkasamantala um, <coughs> so uh, pagkatapos uh, lampas doon at uh, ano yon uh, yung trabaho na ng NDF ay tinitiyak na may mga dagdag na puwersa at sa pamagitan ng United Front yung naabot yung milyon-milyon kagad na tao maaga pa eh yung habang mahina pa yung mga partido at NPA may limitado pa yung kaya niya na tuwirang ugnayan na masa kapag nakipag United Front sa mga ibang establisidong puwersa naabot yung kanilang masa kasi may mga Uh, organisasyon, may mga puwersa sa lipunan na independent sa Communist Party at uh, New People's Army at mga yan, mga partido halimbawa, ng, ng burgues ano yan, eh, may mas following yan, eh, sila yung may ma, may monopoly sa eleksyon no? kaya kung nakuha mo yan yung isang bahagi makasama mo para labanan yung mas masahol na partido ng mga reaksyonaryo, ano yun, pakinabang ng hilusan revolusyonaryo, nakahati yung puwersa nila. <clears throat> Ang napapadali yung gawain ng partido at yung uh, uh, pagkilos ng um, uh, New People's Army. Hindi ko marinig mo. The Communist Party of the Philippines, uh, National Democratic Front, and the uh, New People's Army declared a unilateral ceasefire to help the poor Filipinos combat COVID-19. Um, so what is the difference no, between the healthcare system practiced by the revolutionary forces and the healthcare system implemented by the government of the Philippines? Ah, magkalayo yung patakaran at ginagawa ng dalang panig. Uh, unahin ko na, sa mahabang panahon, ang kilos ng revolusyonaryo nagtatayo ng mga masang uh, organisasyon sa kanayunan at sa mga <coughs> sa kalunsuran, mga komunidad. At uh, yung... Uh, Uh, lalo na sa kanayunan malaki ang uh, pagkakataon para magbuo ng mga organo ng kapangyarihan yun ang uh, gobyerno na sumasaklaw revolusyonaryong gobyerno su sumasaklaw sa lahat at uh, isang mahalagang tungkulin ng mga ng kilusan revolusyonaryo ay ano uh, atupagin yung kalusugan yung sanita public uh, sanitation uh, at yung uh, kalusugan ng mga mamamayan. At uh, may mga organisasyon ng masa na naniniyak na uh, kakooperate nila yung mga organisasyon ng mga health workers, health professionals. May, ikon, eh, may mga organisasyon na, ano, eh, na ng mga doktor, nurse, uh, at iba pang ano, health workers. At um, yung uh, sa, sa mahabang panahon uh, yun ay mabisang kumikilos para pangalagahan ang public health sa mga komunidad itong gobyernong ito na nasa kanya na lahat yung uh, ano yun, yung uh, 
sa pilitang pagbayad ng tax, ano? Hindi ano ginagamit para sa kabutihan ng masa hanggang sa ano, yung tungkol sa kal- kalusugan. Kinukurakot nila. Now, fast forward tayo sa panahon na may COVID-19. Itong si Duterte, ang pilis niya. Uh, um, Duterte has been uh, so quick at uh, us at demanding and getting uh, emergency powers. Pagkatapos kinan niya yung ano, uh, kinabig niya kagad yung uh, more than 350 uh, billion. Pagkatapos kanya pa yung ano, yung trillion trillion na budget na dahil kwan yung nasa kanya kapangyarihan yung mag-realign. Ngayon, ang ginagawa ng mga hayop na yan, yung ano, what they do is to make contracts and uh, overprice what they buy, ano? Uh, bibili ng konting uh, face mask, uh, ano, uh, gagamitin na kumpanya, kumpanya ng, uh, ng official ng Department of Health, i-overprice yon hindi ba sapat yun. At uh, yung... Uh, uh, pati yung protective personal protective uh, equipment para sa mga doktor at uh, nurses ano eh, hindi binibili in sufficient quantity at ano man yung kantidad na binili na in overprice kaya ano yon pagkatapos uh, uh, may mga equipment ba tulad ng respirator uh, yung uh, may may merong bang sapat na bed space may mga gamot ba uh, wala kinukulang Una sa lahat, walang mass testing na kailangan. Importante yung mass testing eh sa kaso ng uh, epidemia para alamin mo paano ilang na ilan na yung ano inabutan ng uh, ng contagion. So, uh, pagkatapos nangako uh, itong uh, Duterte at kanyang gobyerno na dahil i-lockdown ang mga komunidad uh, yung ano Uh, silang magbibigay ng rasyon sa pagkain. Uh, pagkatapos si eh, uh, alam naman ninyo milyon-milyon yung ano nabubuhay lang sa ano uh, yung arawan no na uh, sahod at pati na yung uh, matatawag mong regular na empleyado ano yun yung kita nila yung savings nila hindi makakasapat para ano mabuhay ng more than one week kung ay sa Amerika nga eh ano yan eh, uh, 40% eh, hindi kayang gumastos ng 400, walang ano, walang bank, sa bank account nila, walang more than 400 uh, dollars, ganyan. Kaya sa Pilipinas na mas, pulo, mas ano, pobre, mas marami. So, makikita mo doon na bagamat yung kilo sa revolusyonaryo kulang sa resources na nakukuha ng gobyerno sa sapilitang taxation, ang ano, sa tulungan, mutual aid ng mga tao, sa kooperasyon ng mga mamamayan at mga puwersang revolusyonaryo, maraming nagagawa. Uh, maraming kasama na ang mga nagagawang hindi diktado ng pagkakaroon ng pera. No? Uh, Siyempre, kailangan ng ilang pera para makakuha ng gamot, etc., equipment. No? Pero hindi yun ang prinsipal uh, para yung uh, kalusugan ng mamamayan ay mapang ma, ma, ma uh, that it's taken care of no by uh, the health organizations uh, health uh, workers uh, na uh, laging umaantabay sa public health situation ng mga komunidad na kung saan may people's government wala nang sound na naman Tigelo. Sorry po again. Um, thank you, Tita Jo, for uh, clarifying things up um, about NDFP and um, giving us perspective about the the uh, practice of healthcare of the revolutionary forces. Uh, for now, uh, we will now proceed to the main discussion, which is the task of the youth leagues uh, written by uh, Vladimir Lenin. No, um, Tito Joe, I will now give you the floor to discuss about the main topics. Uh, about the main topics. So, no, no. Tungkol kay Lenin na. Tungkol kay Lenin. Uh, uh, si Lenin, uh, ipinanganak 150 years ago. 
April 22, uh, anniversary niya ay kuan, uh, ano, uh, four days ago. Malapit, no? Uh, pinagbubun niya natin yung kapanganakan ni Lenin uh, dahil siya ay uh, isang uh, uh, epoch-making leader, no? Uh, siya yung responsable sa pagtatayon ng unang uh, sosyalistang uh, bansa. Yung siya yung teorista at uh, uh, dakilang leader ng Russian Revolution at noong October to 1917, uh, ang uring proletariado uh, na namuno sa uh, mga Soviet ng mga manggagawa, magsasaka at mga sundalo, uh, naagaw nila yung kapangyarihan sa Petrograd. No? At um, si um, yung ano, yung uh, first time in the history of mankind na yung uring manggagawa uh, nakapangagaw ng kapangyarihan at nagtagal sa kanyang kamay. Primero, itinayo yung ano, uh, uh, Russian Socialist Republic pagtapos ginawang two years afterwards, sometime a few years afterwards, ginawa na yung kwan, um, uh, Soviet uh, Union na sumasaklaw sa, ano, sa maraming bansa na dating sinaklaw ng Russian Nazarist uh, Empire. At uh, ano yan, ang Soviet Union naging uh, uh, makapangyarihang bansa na pinamumunuan ng uring proletariado. Ngayon, siguro, interesado mga kabataan yung uh, pagkabata ni Lenin. Alam nyo, uh, 17 years old pa lang yan, aktivista na. At uh, <laughs> nung pumasok sa law school, sinipa siya dahil kasama siya kagad sa mga mass action. Pero napakatalino niya. Ah? Napakatalino na. na napakatalino niya. Eh, he studied law by himself. No? Uh, dahil uh, dinischero ng Saris government sa kanyang, ano, yung kanyang estate na kanyang pamilya, uh, yung kanyang tatay, kuwan eh, dati na mga anak ng, ng sir pero nakapag-aral, naging official ba? ng uh, uh, public ng school system ng uh, uh, public school system kaya ano yan nag uh, nagkaroon ng uh, uh, practically upper middle class status sila so dahil sa yung nanay pinag-usap doon na lang ikulong eh doon na lang i-discharge uh, sumudo na kaya tat sa tatlong taon self study lang eh uh, nung kunin niya yung examination ano yan siya yung numero uno ana uh, lumitaw pagkatapos hindi niya no uh, all the time na siya ay naka-discharge at nagse self study ng batas ano yung uh, uh, gumagawa siya ng mga uh, may mga study groups na binubuo at um, yung sa kalaunan by um, uh, nung siya ay 25 years old na mga 19 uh, uh, 18 na 1895 na yon 1870 yung ano eh so 1895 25 years old siya itinayo niya yung emancipation league for a league of struggle for the emancipation of the working class um, ito ay pinakaunang organisasyon ng mga uh, manggagawa sa Rusya at uh, kay ba ito dun sa naunang itinayo ni Plekhanov na uh, emancipation of labor na itinayo about yung mga intelektual ang kasama doon um, so anyway yung kwan ah, ano yun, maubos ang time natin kung ikwento ko lahat ang kwan uh, pinagdaanan ni Lenin bago October Revolution pero doon pa lang sa October Revolution doon napakita uh, na tamang kanyang linya um, Bilang uh, uh, teorista, nasaklaw niya lahat ng mga mahalagang usapin at naitatakda niya uh, ang tamang linya. Kahit na kung minsan yung linyang uh, ibinumungkahin niya, hindi, hindi tinatanggap ka ng, ng mayor ya. Pero dahil tama, ano yun? Uh, sa kalaunan natatanggap. Uh, so, eh, ano lang, bari uh, preliminary muna. Uh, yung uh, sinabi ko 
maaring magtanong kayo kung uh, nang kaugnay pa sa ano anong yung pinapyel ni ni Lenin sa kasaysayan Medyo siya nakamit. Baka nakamit. Nakamit po ulit siya. Nakakalimutan niya. Hello, Tito. Ayan, sorry. Um, uh, tano, i-ask ko lang, what is, uh, what is the relevance of the works and uh, ideas of uh, Vladimir Lenin on the ongoing revolution that is happening in the Philippines currently? Uh, ganito, tungkol sa pampolitikang linya, Uh, mahalaga ito. Si Plekhanov na itinuturing dati na mentor ni Lenin o more senior leader at uh, maalam tungkol sa Marxismo, um, sabi na ni Plekhanov may dalawang uh, stages ng Russian Revolution. Yung bourgeois democratic pagkatapos uh, yung socialist stage. Uh, tanggap ni Lenin yon pero um, si pero hindi niya tinanggap na yung bourgeois democratic stage pamumunuan ng burgues. Ang puto ni Lenin, yung bourgeois democratic stage pwede ng pangunahan ng uh, ng uh, uring manggagawa at itutuloy yung uh, bourgeois democratic revolution sa, sa socialist revolution. Yun ang ano, yun ang ano, yung yun ang dakilang ano uh, ipinosisyon ni Lenin at yun ang naging gabay niya. Sa Pilipinas kanya din natin ang linya natin. Um Kuha natin sa China rin. Ganyan din ginawa ng China tumulad sa Russian Revolution. Yung, yung Bursa Democratic stage na kinawag din ni Mao na New Democratic, hindi na kailangan pang, 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 pangunahan ng uh, burgesya at uh, magpalaki muna yung kapitalismo. Yung, pwede na nga no, yung upon the basic completion of the new democratic or the bourgeois democratic revolution it's already possible to proceed to socialist revolution because the proletariat with its own army and the support of the people uh, has already the power uh, to uh, seize to take over the commanding heights of the economy and um, uh, at the same time make certain bourgeois democratic reforms and dapat pang Uh, kompletuhin tulad ng land reform at kung at uh, kung ano pa o kaya kung may may nagpapatuloy na gera kasi yung mga reaksyonaryong uri gusto pang ano magcomeback sa Russia si Lakolchak at uh, um, Denikin uh, gusto nilang ano yung um, agawin muli yung kapangyarihan mula sa mga nanalo na sa October Revolution Uh, linabanan niyo pagkatapos may panghihimasok ng mga foreign interventionist. Kaya bagamat may mga ganong problema, ano yun? Uh, ang basic element ng pag-umpisa ng social stage ay yung kapangyarihan ay nasa kamay na ng uring proletariado. Uh, uring proletario. Yan. Ay, so, thanks to Lenin. Uh, na, nakuha ng China yung ideya na yan at ang uh, Pilipin, uh, Pilipinas naman nagagabayan sa experience ng uh, uh, China na yung may two-stage revolution na pwedeng pangunahan na, na uring manggagawa. Yan ang, yan, yan ang sa political sphere, yan ang pinaka-importante ang dapat tandaan na relevance ng uh, Russian Revolution at yung pampolitikang pamumuno ni Lenin. Hmm. I see. Tito, follow-up question lang. No? Um, uh, diniscuss ni Lenin sa task of the youth leagues yung mga uh, responsibilities and, uh, na pwedeng gawin ng, um, ng youth, ng progressive youth. And um, paano natin ito ilalapat in advancing, um, in advancing um, the socialist or, or yung, um, yung pag-advance ng socialist revolution sa Philippines? Anong ginawa ni Lenin yung address niya uh, sa uh, Young Communist League, uh, yung uh, pinamagatang ano, task of the youth leagues? Ano yun? Um, nasa early years na yan ng, uh, ng Socialist Republic. Kaya dapat alalahanin natin eh, kung yun, uh, hindi katumbas ng uh, kondisyon sa Pilipinas na malakolonyal at malapyudal Uh, yung um, 
at uh, kailangan pang ano uh, may pagpapalaya mula sa imperialismo at feudalismo uh, lubusin yung uh, pambansang demokratikong revolusyon o bourgeois democratic revolution ba- bago tumuloy sa socialist revolution okay but yung uh, address yung uh, 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 speech ni Lenin uh, mahalaga yan uh, nung nilalaman doon sabi sa kabataan uh, the first thing you must know is to learn learn communism and anong ibig sabihin yan? learn the theory uh, of communism and that's not enough uh, get them to practice So, um, sinabi niya yung kuan maramit gagawin na no, na walang kwenta ang, um, ang, ang pagkilos hindi magiging makabuluhan ko ng theory. Pero ang theory, kung wala namang pagkilos, walang hard work and struggle, wala rin ano doon. Wala rin ibubunga noon. So, ibig sabihin, theory and praktika eh, isagawa. At uh, sa pagsasagawa ng, uh, ng practice, ng praktika, maraming gagawin. Paano uh, magtayo ka ng partido, mga organisasyon ng masa, kailangan labanan mo yung pinaka-importante, labanan mo yung kaway at ipagsak mo. Uh, at uh, siyabi pa niya, bandang dulo sa kanyang um, uh, uh, address, yung um, ano yun, kailangan may moralidad ang mga ang mga uh, komunistang kabataan. May moralidad. At ang morality, very simple, uh, ang morality yung galing sa, hindi, sa dating, hindi galing sa supernatural o sa sino mang otoridad, no? Sa labas ng kilo sa revolusyonaryo. Ang moralidad ay um, alisin ang pagsasamantala at uh, pangape ng managaharing uri. Kaya moral duty yan na uh, ano, ibagsak mo yung ano, ng apet, nagsasamantalang uri para mapalaya ang, uh, ang mga uh, inaape at uh, pinagsasamantala na pinapatrabaho para hinuhututan yung kanilang nalikha sa trabaho. So, yun. Um, ngayon, uh, kung uh, nabanggit ko na si Lenin na ka- bata pa siya, kabataan pa lang siya, ay ano na siya, aktivista. Um, pag ginagawa mo, basta pwede natin ano yan, saklawin from that time on na bata siya hanggang may bagsak yung ano, yung uh, Saris regime at yung burgis na pansamantala, burgis na regime, yung provisional government na <coughs> na pansamantalang uh, tumagan ng kapangyarihan. Ano yun, ang kaharap ng kwan ng, na problema ng mga Bolshevik ay tulad din sa Pilipinas. Yung bagamat ang ano, uh, Russia, ay hindi katulad ng Pilipinas, uh, ang Russia may mga may mga ano na siya, may mga basic industries na, may industry sa bakal, may fuel industry, nakakagawa ng mga traktora, pero ano pa yung uh, extent of capitalist development, hindi pa masyado. So, ang sinasabi, may industrial enclaves in Russia but surrounded by an ocean of medievalism and feudalism. Tanda nyo, feudal ma- ma- malawak sa Russia tulad sa Pilipinas. Uh, mas masahol pang Pilipinas na no, may industriya pero import dependent. Ha? Sa, fuel, sa uh, equipment, fuel, at mga components para sa mga kung anong, uh, ano-ano matang uh, manufacturing. So, may pagkakaparehas na yung mga nagahari ay malalaking kapitalista at malalaking uh, uh, nagmamaari ng uh, uh, lupa. <clears throat> so, um, relevant, uh, lahat ng itinuro ni, lahat ng sinulat ni Renin at itinuro, relevant sa Pilipinas kasi yung conditions ng pre-revolutionary Russia, m- malaking pagkakahawig sa Pilipinas. Mm, I see. Um, Tito Jo, sa Philippine education, no? I mean, um, diniscuss ni Lenin kung paano tuturuan yung mga kabataan. But in the um, in the situation in the Philippines where the school systems are um, being controlled by the capitalist powers, um, does um, the education in Philippines makes the youth illiterate with progressive ideas like uh, socialist or communism? 
ay natural na yung educational system ng nagaharing sistema ng mga malalaking borges at asedero, eh kung yun, yun tinatawag natin reaksyonaryo, kontra-revolusyonaryo, at laban sa anumang ideya ng sos- sosyalismo o komunismo, kontra yung kahit na sa ano lang pagpapabala- pagpapalaya ng uh, bansa sa imperialismo, kontra na sila doon. Pagpawi sa feudalismo, kontra sila doon. So, ang uh, Napaka-abanting bagay yung, yung sosyalismo, komunismo. Ibig sabihin nyo, uri, nagaring uri, mapupuksa. Kaya ayaw na ayaw nila yan. Kaya yung educational system, ginagawa nila para panlito sa mga mag-aaral. At yung uh, nakapag-aaral, umaabot sa matas na antas, uh, nagiging professional uh, o highly skilled uh, technicians, ano yun? Yung uh, pag-iisip nila para manilbihan sa nagkaharing uri. Uh, yun ang ano, uh, yun ang importansya ng uh, educational system, yung pangungundisyon, brainwashing ng ruling class sa uh, uh, utak ng mga nag-aaral. Uh, sa hanay ng mga mag-aaral, ano, ilan lang naman yung mga anak ng mga yayaman dyan, eh. karamihan yung pamidal class. At saka pagkatapos may eh, mas late na portion na yung mga uh, mang, may working students, anak ng mga uring manggagawa o mga empleyado lamang. Pero yan, uh, bibigyan ng lina ideya, pwede silang umakyat sa ruling system. Pero yung, yung pagbibigyan ng ambisyong ganyan, paniniyak na no, merong reliable professional and technical servants uh, uh, of the ruling class para manatili yung exploiting class. So, uh, importante ng uring manggagawa, um, may partido at may organisasyon ng kabataan tulad ng anak bayan, <laughs> halimbawa, na maniniyak na may bagong edukasyon na ikinakalat sa hanay ng mga kabataan. Yung uh, silang uh, mag, uh, uh, maglalantad sa mga problema ng lipunan, anong uri ang kumukontrol, ang nagsasamantala sa mga tao. At um, uh, ano naman uh, ang mga puwersang uh, ma- ma- bubuo uh, at mapapalakas para malabanan yung nagaring sistema. Yan ang malaking papel ng mga puwersang revolusyonaryo. Uh, uh, they start out as ano, yung kwan nasa uh, underside. No? Yung pang, uh, hindi sila kagad na malakas. Kailangan sa proseso ng uh, mahiram na pagtrabaho at pakikibaka doon sila lalakas. Um, so, yun ang ano, uh, mahalagang tandaan na yung tulad sa amin, kung panggitin niyo ang karanasan, um, nung naasa o university, ako, ikwan eh, ang labanan eh, uh, yung between the bourgeois liberals and the religious sectarians, para bang labanan ng ano, Uh, simbahan at ang mga burgis na kwan, may loyalty sa ruling system. Ah, nagpo kami ng mga study group, no? Ang loyalty ng study, study group namin ay sa uring manggagawa at sa mga magsasaka. Ah? At uh, inambisyon namin ah, na uh, magbuo ng study circle para mayroong mga uh, magkakaroon ng ideya at motibasyon na magbuo ng mga puwersang revolusyonaryo at mabago yung nagaharing sistema sa Pilipinas. Ganyan ang papel ng mga puwersang revolusyonaryo. Yung, uh, yung uh, akala mo, yung mga nasa, ano, akala ng mga nasa kapangyarihan ay forever sila doon, no? O kaya nila, yung uri nila, forever, no? Uh, pero, mga revolusyonaryo, ano yun, ginagawa lahat na magagawa para uh, para umabante ang kilos ng revolusyonaryo at uh, may sulong yung pagnanasa at uh, uh, pagkilos ng masa para mapalaya sila. Ayun. Thank you Tito Jo. Um, so uh, from so, uh, yung ilang kabataan um, lalo na now um, um, they tra- um, they they are having difficulties um in understanding these ideas due to this um educational system no um do you say just like um any readings or uh any readings or um ideas na before they can uh so they can understand furthermore si Lenin 
Oo, oh, oh, oh. siyempre may mga ano yan, naipon na sa kabangyaman ng ano, kilo sa revolusyonaryo. At uh, bilang pagrespeto kay Lenin, banggitin ko yung mga importante yung babasahin. Um, yung, uh, uh, at you know, si Lenin madaling basahin. Na? Yung uh, maninipis yung volume na marami. Na, ano, um, ang makapal-kapal lang yung ano yung uh, tungkol sa pilosopiya no yung uh, in materialism and imperial criticism pagkatapos development of capitalism in Russia tungkol naman sa political economy ng Russia pero yung mga mahalagang libro niya what is to be done uh, paano magbuo ng partido um, ano yung two uh, tactics of social democracy democracy in the, um, In the democratic revolution, manipis lang yun. Doon mo maintindihan kung ano, ang, uh, yung basic, uh, basic class struggle, no? uh, habang sinasagawa ang democratic revolution at uh, mula sa punto de vista ng uring magagawa, ano ang ano, gagawin para ano, uh, tumuloy sa socialist revolution, ang democratic revolution. Um, tapos, eh, no pa, yung imperialism, In, in, hanggang ngayon napakahalaga yan dahil sa lalo na ngayon ano, mga revisionista binagsak nila yung mga sosyalistang bansa no? yung tayo ay narumpa sa yugto uh, yung historical stage ng modern imperialism and proletarian revolution na si Lenin ang nag-define kaya hanggang ngayon si Lenin uh, relevant na relevant dahil ano yon uh, sinasabi sa atin Uh, ano yung characteristics ng imperialism at nakikita natin at uh, ang nangyari pa nga nung uh, itong Estados Unidos ay nakapanalo sa Cold War dahil sa betrayal ng revisionism lalo nga no gumawa ng ano uh, katarantaduhan nagpa nagkaroon ng laya na ano ipataw yung neoliberalism sa sa buong bansa no ay sa buong daigdig at eh, pumasok sa endless wars no para ano yon kamkamin niya lahat ng resources sa uh, uh, daigdig pero ano yun nabubuking kaya ngayon yung neoliberalism at yung uh, yung ano walang parang walang katapusan na agresyon ng US ano niya self defeating kaya nasa strategic decline ang US maintindihan natin lahat yan hindi tayo magugulat sa sa US pati na doon sa rising imperialist power na China dahil si Lenin ang nagturo sa atin na mga yan uh, akala mo yung napaka makapangyarihan at walang katapusan kapangyarihan pero nagbabangayan yan uh, buhad kung ma- mapansin ninyo sa kasaysayan yung first world war di ba nagbunga ng isang unang sosyalistang bansa pag nabos yung ikalawa nagbunga ng several socialist countries and uh, national liberation movements pag ganap, sumingit ngayon yung kuhan. Disgrasya na binigay ng kuhan. <laughs> Modern revisionism sa, sa socialismo. Pero, ano yun? Hindi, ma, hindi ma, matatapos uh, ng kompletamente yung labanan, yung epochal struggle between the proletariat and the uh, bourgeoisie. So, nang abuso ng abuso, mga imperialista, nung akala nila, wala ng socialist uh, challenger. O, oh, pero... Uh, ano yun uh, pinalala nila at pinadalas nila ang mga krisis kaya ngayon may pagkakataon ng proletariado at lahat ng puwersang revolusyonaryo na sumulong kaya yan ang madalas kong sinasabi ngayon nasa transition period tayo ngayon sa world sa resurgence of the world proletarian revolution and the anti-imperial struggles will keep on intensifying and spreading So, yan ang mahalag- mahalagang value ni Lenin. Tapos, si Lenin, uh, <laughs> pari pagpatuloy ko, ano yung mga sinulat niya na pwedeng basahin, State and Revolution. Uh, madaling basahin niyan. Um, at uh, napaka-essential yan. Uh, nakapagbigay ng pag-intindi kung ano bang esensya ng, ano, ng kapangyarihan ng, um, <coughs> ng uh, isang uh, estado na mapang-ape. Um, yung ano, coercive instruments are the most important yan. Uh, may main component yan, uh, army. At 
At yung Estado consists mainly of ano, coercive instruments. Eh, hukbo, uh, polis, preso, pag ginabos nandiyan na yung mga ano, uh, secondary instruments nila, mga parliamentaryan. So yung mga ano, mga panlangis ng sistema sa uh, mamamayan. <coughs> so, Thank, ano, you. Thank you dito, no. Um uh, in in uh, regards sa social conditions, no. Um yung Filipino youth in Europe are d- definitely has more privileged kesa sa youth in the Philippines that experience first hands that, that experience first hand this crisis no despite the fact um uh, that that a lot are still part of the working class sa Europe uh they could turn blindly against their oppression and exploitation making it challenging to organize them so uh, how can we as a progressive youth organization can use the teaching of Lenin to organize these youth and to continue the legacy of uh, Lenin Sa tingin ko, no, kung meron mang ilang mga Pilipinong estudyante na porke may privilege sila kasi meron silang ang mga estado dito sa Europa, halimbawa, eh, kung yan, uh, duman na sa strag- class struggle din at struggle ng mga um, yung pinakareaksyonaryo ang kagay Hitler yan, inabot ng reaksyonaryo pagkatapos yung mga may mga, kontak- may mga Uh, progresibo at revolusyonary pang puwersa. May Communist Party, may Social Democratic Party, may kunyan, uh, nagtulak ng reforms. Kaya ano yun, yung kung meron bang advantages dito, mas- masasabing privilege in comparison to the deprivation in the Philippines, kung yun, um, bunga yan ng ano rin kasaysayan. Pero sa ilalim ng neoliberalism, Inagnas na yan, inaagnas yan. Binabawi yung mga pinanalo ng uring manggawa sa mga nakaraang dekada. Binawi. Kaya ano yon? madaling ipaliwanag at uh, lumilitaw naman eh sa iba't ibang bansa ng Pilipinas, ay sa iba't ibang bansa ng Europa halimbawa, na yung, uh, yung mga social benefits na erod, no? uh, social uh, services. Kasi ang uh, neoliberalism pinapaburan niya yung ano privatization at uh, yung pagiging profitable ng mga investments uh, ng uh, mga monopolista at yung uh, maraming ginagawa lahat ng paraan paano para mapabilis yung accumulation of capital ng mga kapitalista ginawa sa nakarang ano apan na dekada yan Kaya ano, mas mabuti pa ang kalagayan nung ano, some four decades ago eh. Pero ngayon, deteriorated na in in terms o in the context ng mga Europeo mismo. Sa ngayon, nakikita natin yung paglitaw na naman ng pa, mga fascist movement. Ha? At yun know, ang alam mo ang ginagawang hudyo, ang kumbaga nung panahon ni Hitler, hudyo yung ano, tinatarget. Ngayon, mga migrants, eh, di ba? yung mainline ng mga pasista eh kuan anti anti-immigrants kanya din sa US yan ang ginawa ni ano ni ni Trump para manalo makakuha niya suporta ng mga white supremacists ganyan din ginagawa ano mga yung mga fascist minded leaders ng Netherlands at kuno pang European countries kaya ngayon may umiigteng yung labanan ng uh, Uh, yung fascist and anti-fascist movements. At siyempre, yung nasa uh, panig ng fascist movement, eh, kung ano yun, pinapaburan ng mga nasa uh, kapangyarihan, pati ng mga polis, eh, si, uh, yung pinababayan ng polis sila. Pero uh, pag may anti-fascist protest dyan, eh, eh, yan, eh, uh, uh, kinokontra agad ng, ng polis. So, pero um, admittedly, sa pagitan ng mga kabatanan natin sa Europe, na may access pa uh, to certain privileges. Uh, ikumpara mo sa mga estudyante sa Pilipinas, yung mga mahihirap, ano yun? Mas ano yun? Uh, underprivileged, more deprived yung mga nasa Pilipinas. Importante, uh, sa pagkilos ng anak bayan, may analysis. Uh, may analysis um, ng mga namumuno na. Uh, applying the theory and practice that Lenin had, Uh, gumawa na rin kayo ng analysis batay sa ano ba, social investigation ninyo at uh, 
alamin ninyo ang kalagayan dito at na dapat ilantad eh, ipaabot sa kalaman ng kabataan na gusto ninyong isama sa organisasyon yung, hini, yung hinihimok ninyo um, yung uh, pagkatapos ipaalam din ang kalagayan sa Pilipinas na mas masahol kailan maintindihan ng mga kabataan na nasa abroad na mga magulang nila umalis sa Pilipinas kasi wala silang pagkakataon Ah, yung maluba ang, ang unemployment, ah, yung um, hindi ba ngayon kaugnay ng COVID, no? Ay eh, mga nurses natin ay eh, kumalat sa buong daigdig pero nagkinukulang na ng nurses sa Pilipinas. Ah, ngayong may crisis. Pero hindi natin masisisi mga nurse na 'yan dahil uh, yung uh, ano 'yan, kailangan maghanap buhay sila para sa mga pamilya sila kaya nag abroad Ang ganyan din masasabi natin sa mga uh, mga migrant workers na nangailangang na umalis sa Pilipinas para mag, maghanap buhay. Dahil kung nanatili sila sa Pilipinas, mag-uhutom lang sila. <laughs> so, um, ganoon. Pero yung mga naiwan sa Pilipinas, kailangan din ano, ma, mabigyan ng support and solidarity by yung kabatang Pilipino na nasa abroad Para ano yun? Uh, may ano na tayo, dapat orientasyon natin, internasyonalista. Ah? Uh, siya, pag internasyonalista ka, siyempre, kuhan, lampas sa sarili mo interes, lampas sa interes na isang grupo lang, isang ethnic group, lampas sa interes ng isang bansa, kahit na isa alang-alang mo yung interes ng bansa, kung ito ay naapi ng ibang bansa. No? So, uh, ang nag-uugnay, Ang nag-uugnay naman sa pagitan ng anak bayan ng abroad at anak bayan sa Pilipinas, yung ano, yung uh, mahalaga rin yung kinship as uh, fellow Filipinos, pero may internationalist dimension yan, na, uh, which brings you to the necessity of studying uh, the, uh, the teachings and experiences of revolutionaries Uh, who stood for the interest of the working class and for the cause of socialism, yeah? uh, together with the cause of anti-imperialism and anti-feudalism. So, um, yung, yun ang ano, uh, paliwanag ko kung gaano ka-importante na merong anak bayan na nagbuhat sa Pilipinas, kumalit abroad, at dapat yung nasa Pilipinas, nasa abroad, uh, may pinagkakasunduan nila kung anong gawin. Hindi. Parang muog na ba o, no? Tito, um, ano ba yung um, experiences no? Um, during yung um, naranasan or yung the experiences of the youth during the time of Lenin uh, that led to the establishment of the Youth League? Um, are these conditions uh, and social uh, socio-economical conditions uh, still visible today? Ay, ano, marami. Kasi ganito yun eh, kahit naagaw na yung kapangyarihan sa... Petrograd, eh, kung ano eh, eh, yung mga, uh, may mga makasarista uh, at uh, meron din yung uh, matigas ang ulong sumusuporta sa provisional government, ayaw nila yung uh, gobyerno ng, um, ng mga manggagawa at magsasaka. Ayaw nila, yun na nangyari yung October Revolution. Kaya ano yun, may civil war eh. Pagkatapos ng ano, pangagaw ng kapangyarihan sa Petrograd, nagkaroon ng civil war. Lumaganap, napunta sa countryside ang labanan. At tapos pumasok yung interventionist powers ng um, uh, uh, Britain, France, US. Yung tinatukoy mo kanina na anti-communist powers. Ayaw nila talaga may, ano, sumulpot sa dragdig ang uh, komunismo. Tapos yung hindi ba si Lenin mismo, eh, kung, eh, binaril ng socialist revolutionary. May, alam mo yung Socialist Revolutionary, kwan, eh, anarchist group yan eh, na nakaalyado ng, uh, ng Bolshevik, pero ano yun, uh, iba talaga yung linya nila, nila uh, abot ang kwan, ang um, uh, pamantayan ng, mga mangga, ng uring magagawa at yung uh, layuning sosyalista. So, tapos, eh, uh, Pagkatapos, dahil sa kondisyon sa gera, ano yun, mahirap ang buhay. Um, yung 
Merong uh, tinawag na war communism. Kung anong meron, yon tinitiyak na ma, ma, may rasyon. No? Walang mamamatay sa gutom, kumare no? Iyon na tinawag na war communism. Kaya si Lenin, um, yung ano na, nagtakda ng ano, pa, new economic policy to revive uh, the economy immediately, even by conceding uh, to, to the uh, uh, peasants, no? Na including the rich peasants, no? Pero doon sa address niya, sa youth lakes, sinasabi niya na magpakaingat kasi ganito yan eh. Pag nag-land reform ka, matapos na maagaw ang kapangyarihan sa mga sendero, you create millions of, ano, of petty bourgeois na kung hindi mo binigyan ng edukasyon, eh wala kang paraan paano mapromote mo ang cooperation, agricultural cooperation, Uh, ano yan, yung uh, makasarili, pag-iisip, no? Pagkatapos yung rich peasants, ano yan, pwede pang maging lumaking, ano, burgess. Yung, uh, da, yung that's the rural bourgeoisie yan, eh, yung uh, rich peasants. Pero kailangan for a while na under control, uh, haya mo sila para ma-revive yung agriculture, no? Pagkatapos may mga lang empresa pa yan, eh, na uh, eh yun ang tinatawag ni Lenin na buying off policy. Yung para hindi lumayas, yung mga managers, yung mga maalam, uh, yung merong compromise sa mga small ano, entrepreneurs, no? uh, hindi mo basta ano yun. Eh, imposible. Ilan yung kwan, eh. Ilan lang bilang lang ano, Bolshevik. Eh? Eh, kwan yun eh, eh dumapa yung ano, eh, nanalo ka laban kay Kerensky dahil ano, <laughs> bumagsak ang ekonomiya sa panahon niya. Umayo siya sa pag tapos si eh, patuloy na gusto niya may gera, no? So nanalo dahil sa ano, antenable. Kaya nag naisipan nila ng new policy, pero tinit sabi ni sinabi niya sa kabataan, tiyakin na ano pa rin. Pagamat ginagawa ang mayroong patakarang ganito, bantayan at uh, tiyakin na yung batayan ng sosyalismo mananatili. So Um, ganon, yung uh, mm. kung, ano, complex ang situation lagi sa revolutionary ano, uh, sa paggawa ng revolution and, uh, si Jamo ma, ma, yan na important siya ng kwan pag-aral kay Lenin uh, uh, alam mo yung maliwanag na ginawa para ano, uh, makapag-consolidate ng power uh, mapangibawawa ng mga problema at matitiyak na susulong yung uh, pala, susulong pa rin yung revolusyon. Mm. Tito, um sabi sa Task of Youth Leagues no, um the nasabi nila nin na uh, I've read it like the um youth should dedicate his energy and uh time um uh, learning communism uh, communism. So um um he'll uh, they will spend time in theorizing and uh, practicing communist ideology, no? Uh would it be wrong to think about enjoying the time of our youngness, spending time to love and to be a youth, or um, enjoy yung um, essence ng pagiging bata namin. Ganon. Ganon. May simple sagot ako dyan. No? Uh, kabataan ka man, o matanda ka na. Uh, kung nagustuhan mo yung trabaho, enjoy ka. Di ba? <laughs> kung nagustuhan mo, kung ayaw mo trabaho, malungkot ka. Ngayon, ganito, uh, hindi naman bus, ano hindi naman lugmok lahat sa ano pagsubsub sa ano sa trabaho at uh, hindi naman puro puro pag uh, pagganyon pagsuong sa peligro at kamatayan no ginagawa ng rebolusyonaryo um, tayo mga rebolusyonaryo enjoy tayo sa ano pakikibaka dahil <laughs> naninilbihan tayo sa tao yun ang ating ano yun, yun ang ating happiness hindi yung ano, mag-acquire ng kung anong kayamanan, no? Ano man, o oh, mag-acquire ng kung anong mag-arang kotse, o ano. Talaga, ano, sadyang, ano, uh, yung happiness natin <laughs> ay nasa pagsilbi sa, sa mga mamamayan. That's the fundamental point, no? Pagkatapos, syempre, uh, to be able to succeed uh, in the revolutionary work, kailangan mag-aral naman, no? Necessary yan. Lalo na kapag ano, you have to do a lot of unlearning. Eh? 
uh, you learn communism to unlearn the anti-communism that you get from from the schools and from the mass media, di ba? That's that's a lot of work, no? And then it's not enough to have the ideas. You have to realize those ideas. You have to do practical work. Mabigat din yan. Pagkatapos, kung ano-ano ang gagawin ng kalaban, magbaban ka, huhuloyin ka, pahihirapan ka, uh, papapatayin ka, pero hindi niya kaya. Sa kalaunan, hindi niya kaya na gawin uh, lahat siyang ano, punitive actions na yan. Kapag, uh, kung talagang magaling kang revolusyonaryo, along the way, happy-happy ka na, napaparami mo ang kasama mo, wala, yung pan, hindi nila, hindi makayanan ang kalaban mo na puksain ka. Ikaw ang pupuksa. Ikaw ang pupuksa sa kalaban mo. Uh, so, and that's the joy of making revolution to. <laughs> Kapag nanalo ka dahil napupu- na, natatalo mo yung kalaban. Ngayon, uh, pero sa, sabihin ko sa iyo, sa normal na uh, takbo ng buhay sa kilo sa revolusyonary, meron naman pampaligaya sa ating kana yan. Eh. May cultural activities, may sports, may mga may mga Uh, may mga ano, may mga social din tayo eh na may kasayahan, no? Eh, Nakapag-karaoke pa tayo ng mga revolutionary songs eh. Ayun lang, ina-expect ko na ano, may makagawa ng ano, makagawa ng ano 'yon, collection ng revolutionary songs, 'yun ang ikakaraoke. And <laughs> so, eh you may ben, may mga activities na pampaligaya sa hanay na din. So, 'yun. Eh Ibig sabihin, uh, yung masaya ang nasa kilo sa revolusyon, ano? E, yung <laughs> ako, hindi kahit na nasa kanayunan ako, anytime pwedeng, imbis na ikaw makapanambang, si ikaw matambangan, eh, eh, ako hindi nininerbyos. Kasi ano yan, eh, may tiwala ka sa nagagawa mo, eh. may tiwala ka na marami kang kasamahan. Ha? At kung, ma- <laughs> kung sakali maging martyr ka, aba, Maraming ano, ma-inspire na ano pagpatuloy yung trabaho mo ganoon. So, eh, ang fundamental yan yung serve the people. Uh, so, yun ang kinaliligaya mo. At uh, kung uh, eh, diyan mo pa pinupunan sarili pag hindi mo hindi mo nagagawa na mabuti yung pagsisilbi sa ano, sa mamamayan at sa revolusyon. Thank you Tito. Very inspiring. Um, yung um, sagot dito. And this is the last question that um, that we prepare for Tito Jo. No, if you have uh, further questions, you could um, drop it down sa comment and uh, we'll collate it before. Um, and uh, we'll ask Tito Jo about it. Very inspiring yung um, answer sa last question, which um, we need to unlearn anti-communist ideologies and um, you know, um, hindi naman talaga totoo na boring ang magsilbi sa bahay. In fact, napakasaya nito at napaka-fulfilling sa puso. No? Uh, we'll be back after a five-minute cultural performance. Uh, uh, we'll be back after this uh, cultural performance and uh, we'll start the Q&A discussion uh, again from um, the masses. So if you have questions, again, um, just drop it down on the comment section. Thank you.
Hello, comrades, and we are back now here at the National Democratic Online School, the Lenin Serie. So we are now opening the floor for uh, the questions of audience. We we do have the first one here. Tito Jo, um, tanong mula sa audience. What are the urgent tasks among our overseas communities in the time of the pandemic? Well, the task I can uh, think of immediately um, of the youth, uh, particularly anak ng bayan, uh, uh, in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, I would suggest that <clears throat> you uh, know what are the policies and what campaigns uh, and actions uh, Anak Bayan Philippines uh, is doing. Uh, the idea behind that is that uh, you have to know what they are doing so that you would know how to help them. So, uh, Anak Bayan abroad can uh, help uh, Anak Bayan um, uh, uh, in, in the motherland. And, uh, but that's uh, focusing on uh, the COVID-19 uh, problem itself, no? And then, um, you also think of what you can do uh, in order to be of help to the uh, to the Filipino communities abroad and to uh, and uh, how you can also cooperate with uh, uh, organizations of the host people and other peoples uh, with whom with uh, whom you have solidarity. So you might also find out uh, that um, under the auspices of uh, other of uh, let's say more encompassing. Uh, progressive organizations, there might be, eh? there might be a charity foundation that collects resources um, to help the Philippines for various purposes. And one of the purposes could be providing assistance uh, to the to the frontline uh, health workers in the Philippines. Uh, you know very well that uh, even the health workers are not being provided with uh, uh, personal protection uh, equipment, and then maybe you can come to know uh, what uh, is now the more effective medicine or vaccine available, and uh, you can uh, inform people back home. There are many, there are many things you can do in order to uh, give help. And uh, with regard, I, I'm putting in the first place Anak Bayan and the people in the Philippines because they are uh, in much need. Here, you are practically guest of uh, existing governments and uh, host uh, peoples and their own organizations. So um, I can only say that if you happen to be health workers, do your, you know, do your, uh, uh, perform your role as you should, no? Uh, you, have, you have to uh, carry out your obligations to the patients. And if you are non-health workers, but you belong to Nagbayan, uh, this is the time of, uh, of course, to make friends and uh, to show uh, any kind of support that you can give to the Filipino health workers. Uh, you know, even abroad in uh, overdeveloped countries like the U.S. and some countries, you know, uh, because of the, the neoliberal policy of neglecting the public health system, uh, the health workers are not provided with uh, with you know uh, adequate uh, uh, personal protection uh, uh, equipment. That's why quite a number of them are getting infected and dying. That's the that's how uh, infectious uh, COVID nineteen is. So now, uh, in general, what are the tasks of the uh, uh, anak bayan abroad, no, as well as uh, at home in the Philippines. Well, you have to at this time, uh, considering the situation of the lockdown. Eh, uh, I appreciate that uh, anak bayan is thought of uh, having this uh, online activity. Diba? You, 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 uh, uh, what seemed to be a dismal situation in which you cannot go out. Uh, uh, you. You think of the way to communicate with each other, not only to communicate, no? But uh, to engage in learning. Uh, 
So uh, you have taken the, this occasion to initiate, to create and initiate this uh, Lenin online. So uh, that is uh, one good result from a, uh, uh, what would have been a bad situation. And, um, uh, and I think this should give you the idea that you can expand uh, uh, the, the learning process by using the, uh, using the uh, internet. I, I've long thought of uh, uh, having the internet um, websites and other uh, and webinars and so on. Uh, long ago, I thought of this because you know uh, it's quite expensive to bring people together in meetings. Uh, with COVID-19 or no COVID-19, uh, you pay a lot, you know. Especially if your meetings are always centralized, no? Uh, you go to uh, to the big city from another city. Uh, that costs you the the, uh, the the transport cost is uh, could amount to you know buy, to a new shirt no or uh, it's substantial no in uh, in um, abroad in capitalist countries uh, uh, transportation is expensive but if you utilize the if you utilize the internet uh, you can have meetings study meetings even uh, work meetings uh, if you if your business is legal anyway uh, you can discuss it uh, um, via the uh, internet no you can have video conference and uh, so i'm not saying to i'm not saying that you forget about uh, uh, interface meetings no interface meetings have also their own importance because that's the way how uh, that that is more human, no? Uh, directly human uh, video conferencing is uh, is is virtual. It works only because you've known eh, other people personally before, no? So um, uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> I have a I, yeah. another thing. Another thing, no? I forgot to mention, you know, uh, some an, an important thing. I uh, refer to cultural activities. Uh, you know, uh, a lively thing in the youth movement is having cultural groups. If you can cre create uh, cultural groups in every place where you have a chapter, that's fine. And you can have, uh, you don't only have talk sessions eh, by internet. You can have cultural performances. Eh? <laughs> And, and, and quite, and <clears throat> you don't have to to pay uh, rent, no? Expensive rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Tita, second question. Um, there's a comment from Phoebe Maria. Clarification lang po. Yung two-stage revolution, di ba pasok ang uh, Pilipinas na agrarian revolution as a means to redistribute lands? Tapos yung sa socialist revolution, kailan may realize ang seize the factory and socialization of the means of production? Ngayon na rin po, paano? Uh, you know, during the new democratic or the, uh, the uh, Bolshevik democratic revolution of the new type, uh, new type dialogue, already led by the proletariat, uh, agrarian revolution is the main content. Uh, main content of the democratic revolution because it, it is done for the benefit of the biggest number of exploited people, namely the peasants. So that has to be done. <clears throat> Wherever the revolutionary movement is strong enough to distribute the land free, to confiscate the land from the landlords and then uh, give it give it free. But, but you know, uh, we have uh, in the Philippine revolution, we have de defined... Uh, uh, two sub-stages in the agrarian revolution. <clears throat> we even use the term land reform in place of uh, agrarian revolution. Anyway, what we call the minimum, <clears throat> the minimum stage is, you know, rent reduction, uh, raising farm wages, uh, eliminating usury, uh, raising prices at farm grade, that, that's uh, that's uh, no, that's uh, reform. No, uh, you don't confiscate land yet. No, and the movement goes into this minimum land reform uh, because it is uh, 
it's it does this when it's still very small and very uh, weak and you know um, if you fight the entire uh, landlord class by trying to confiscate uh, they will you know they, they're in a better position to crush uh, the little <coughs> movement that you begin with <coughs> so uh, you take advantage of the splits among the landlords that's united front no uh, there are the small landlords and uh, there are uh, and uh, you have to consider also that maybe they acquired the land in some uh, legitimate ways, like uh, a school teacher retiring and then buying 15 hectares. <laughs> so a small landlord, uh, you know, you become a landlord when most of your income comes from, you know, the work, uh, from the, the work of the, yes. uh, the peasants. That's, yes. um, <clears throat> uh, so then at the advanced stage, when the movement is already so strong in a certain a region, or in the whole country, you can confiscate. And, in that, and, that's, and uh, you um, uh, carry out the maximum land reform, and that's, uh, com that uh, makes the agrarian revolution. But you know, uh, as in every process, as in the uh, materialization of any process, there is what you call uneven development. No? Uh, it is possible for the revolution to win power already uh, without... Uh, having completed yet the land reform or the agrarian revolution. So what remains of that? Because, you know, you can only win in certain parts, and yet the your enemy regime is already, has already collapsing. Huh? You get the point? The land reform is not completed because you can only occupy certain parts uh, of the country, but you have enough to seize power, okay? So the land reform or agrarian revolution is not yet completed. But when you have already the power, uh, the enemy is already defeated, then you can complete. So in the um, end, um, you call the next stage socialist because the proletariat is in power. And then second, it, um, uh, it has already seized the commanding heights of the economy. What does that mean? You control the state banks. You control uh, the uh, the most strategic industries and uh, the main the the main sources of raw materials, the main lines of communication. The Bolsheviks did that uh, in the initial years, you know. But of course, in the Philippines, uh, there is not really much of industrial development. Okay. The big compradors and the imperialists can easily leave, you know, and <clears throat> the socialist revolution in the long run will have to be uh, created and the material where with us of socialist revolution will have to be created uh, by the proletarian socialist state and uh, uh, the Filipino proletariat, no? So you, you get the sequence, no? Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, usually... It said um, the uh, bourgeois democratic revolution is basically completed, no? But not 100%. Basically, does not mean 100% completion. But some of the tasks that have to be carried out, not yet completed, can be, uh, con can be completed already after the beginning, the beginning of the socialist revolution, which... Uh, how is that beginning signified? It is signified by the power of state, of the state being in the hands of the working class. And uh, the exploiting classes have been, uh, have been dismissed from uh, their ownership of uh, uh, enterprises and land. No? <clears throat> and then uh, the commanding heights of the economy uh, have already been taken over. Uh, I think to repeat, uh, by commanding heights, I mean whatever basic industries there are, that's taken over. The main lines, the main sources of raw materials, taken over. And uh, the main lines of uh, uh, transport, distribution, taken over. So um, uh, the, the socialist revolution uh, is, already, uh, is already on, no? And um, uh, it uh, can only go forward with the correct uh, strategy and tactics. And then, mind you, 
<coughs> land reform means uh, creating millions of petty bourgeois. So how do you solve the problem of private ownership? Uh, you engage the beneficiaries of land reform in agricultural cooperation. Uh, through stages of cooperation, uh, you, you advance the socialization of agriculture in line with the development of industry. And with industry providing the machines, the agricultural machines and better an infrastructure, then socialism can also develop on the rural side, on the agricultural side. You get the interrelation? Mm. The, uh, <clears throat> the private ownership gets passed on, no? Because uh, you can imagine, no? So you have certain uh, peasant families, okay? Uh, it's not difficult to convince them to join the communes because the industries are expanding. Their children are getting industrial employment, okay? <clears throat> and then uh, they have reproduced. Why is divide and subdivide um, a, a, a small piece of land, no? <laughs> not so, not so, not so uh, fruitful for the family. So yeah. <clears throat> you are more productive. The economy as a whole becomes more productive when communes are set up and industry runs ahead, and the two uh, the two sectors help each other out. Uh, thank you, Tito. Um, next question, man. Let's proceed. Um, next question is from Lee. The government or the Department of Health is not transparent with the information they give during this pandemic. This greatly affects our masses because they are being misinformed. Then uh, how can we combat the misinformation that comes from our, the government itself? Ah, that's a good uh, that's a good question because I did not cover uh, that I did not I failed to cover when I talked to what can be done in relation to COVID. Yes, information campaign is important. Uh, and Anakbayan uh, in the Philippines and abroad uh, should uh, um, uh, spread the correct information. So, uh, so it's not just a matter of trying to uh, give some material assistance to the health workers. Uh, it's also important uh, uh, to uh, di disabuse the people from the uh, uh, lies, uh, from the false news and lies of the uh, of the reactionary government. And the reactionary government is driven to make a lot of lies because it tries to cover, cover up its uh, failed promises and its uh, corruption in, the, in not fulfilling the promises. You know, they say, oh, you'll have food rations, you'll have, uh, uh, you have, you'll have money uh, to compensate, to countervail your loss of wages and so on. But, you know, oh, the those things don't reach the people. Those, uh, those are uh, pocketed. And there is no mass testing at all. So uh, this, um, uh, this uh, uh, lockdown uh, that has been um, pushed by WHO <coughs> um, uh, is being taken advantage of and uh, as an opportunity to steal public money. So all of these things have to be uh, exposed so that uh, um, the people will be outraged. They will know the abuses they are uh, undergoing, the causes of their suffering, and they would be able to organize themselves, respond uh, to calls for organization. And... Um, the, this, it means to say all these bad things being done by the government will push the people uh, to make revolution. Uh, right now, people are angry that uh, they are being cheated uh, of uh, you know the taxes, the tax money that the government uh, officials are pocketing, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, the more the reactionary government now tries to spread lies in order to uh, you know, for instance, there are stories like. Uh, uh, invented by the military and the government. Oh, uh, uh, food and money are not reaching the people because the NPA is intercepting or uh, uh, it's attacking the government officials who are supposed to spread to uh, deliver these things. Those are big lies. Um, so information is an important function because it's 
part of uh, arou inform uh, arousing the people uh, so that you may be able to organize them and mobilize them. And it's possible to organize even when there is a lockdown. Even if people are uh, punished uh, for uh, going out, they can make noise barrages. Huh? Uh, I think you have also done this on a more small, smaller scale. But in the Philippines, it can be done on a on a on a large scale. Uh, noise barrages and uh, uh, there are many things that can be done while you're at home. But these are preparations for the big happenings of the future when people can gather and they can make moves uh, to uh, make the government account for its uh, its crimes against the people. All right. Next question, naman, uh, Tito. Um, uh, this question is, what are your thoughts about Vietnam successfully fighting the COVID-19? Um, is... Uh, as uh, Vietnam is uh, currently uh, at the imperialist powers, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, I appreciate, uh, I commend uh, Vietnam for being able to control very early uh, the threat of the uh, uh, COVID-19. They acted early. Um, uh, unlike the Philippine government, you know, the Philippine government is the complete opposite of the uh, uh, Vietnamese government. Uh, Duterte was uh, the one saying, "Oh, this will um, uh, this will blow over. This is nothing. Uh, uh, there are more people who die of, uh, of the ordinary flu, and we need the money uh, from the uh, Chinese tourists and the casinos, the pogos." So uh, there was that uh, explanation of Duterte. So he did not act uh, timely. And then when he acted, when there were already too many cases, he, uh, he uh, made the, uh, he pretended to uh, take actions. It, uh, while late, he, there was no planning, no preparation. Um, and uh, he was more interested in getting emergency powers and money and in terrorizing the people. Uh, not uh, he, that he did not have any plan of uh, testing. As a matter of fact, his Department of Health uh, uh, secretary says, uh, <coughs> you, he said, you, you diagnose yourself and stay at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and then it turns out that his specialty was his own drug company, eh? uh, uh, delivering overpriced drugs to, to the government, no? So that's the big difference between Vietnam and uh, the Philippines. You know, it's not only about COVID that uh, Vietnam acts differently from the Philippine government. Uh, Vietnam kind of, uh, has the uh, uh, strength of courage to tell the Chinese to uh, to get away from its exclusive, uh, from its uh, own sea, you know. Uh, but uh, Duterte apologizes for the, and even thanks the Chinese government for uh, violating the sovereign rights of the Philippines in the uh, West Philippine Sea. So you have uh, a stupid, uh, brutal, and corrupt uh, 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 leader in the Philippines. Uh, so he's, he's, uh, um, when I say stupid, I don't say he's uh, uh, stupid in everything. He's quite intelligent uh, in ex in. Um, grabbing power uh, and uh, killing uh, people extrajudicially and stealing public money. That's where the cleverness and uh, uh, intelligence. Uh, <laughs> uh, Follow-up question, Tito. Um, is, uh, do we consider Vietnam a socialist um, country? Or, uh, yeah, can we consider socialist as our, uh, the, their government as our friend? Uh, are they socialist or uh, communist? Well, it depends what countries are uh, you are referring to. Is it uh, Vietnam? Uh, indeed, uh, you know, uh, countries like um, uh, even China or Cuba or Vietnam, for the simple reason that they, there are state-owned corporations, or oh, they're still socialist. For the simple reason that they have some social services, are that still socialism, no? But uh, in the case of, uh, of China, 
it's already uh, a full capitalist system. You don't even call it uh, social imperialist, an imperialist power pretending to be socialist. No, it's very rare. Uh, in, internationally, you don't hear China uh, trying to sell itself uh, by propaganda that it is still socialist. No, uh, you have a two-tiered economy in uh, China. One state owned, the other is private owned, and uh, both are uh, 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 monopoly capitalists. Now, in um, you know, in Vietnam, in Vietnam, yes, they have this experience of uh, state-owned corporations and well-developed uh, social services. Now, uh, I think uh, they have. Uh, <laughs> I cannot guarantee that they are uh, uh, as socialist as, as they should be, um, but uh, uh, the uh, you know. Uh, Vietnam is a favorite investment ground of the U.S. now. No? The former enemy is now uh, happily investing in Vietnam. But, uh, but uh, you know, countries that uh, uh, had the ambition of becoming socialists usually know how to use uh, state uh, organs uh, and state resources and state planning to deal with any problem like COVID-19. Unlike a you know, unlike an out and out, eh? and uh, an out and out uh, um, uh, semi-colonial and semi-feudal uh, uh, system that takes pride in uh, uh, depriving people of uh, uh, benefits from the state, no? All right. In uh, in uh, speaking of imperialism, Tito, it comes to the next question. It connects with the next question. How is the U.S. and Chinese imperi uh, China imperialists use the COVID nineteen for the own, for their own gains? Oh yes, by exercising uh, powers over the people in the name of uh, of uh, fighting a, a threat to public health. So uh, the uh, the leaders can act as demagogues to increase their political power. Right. And uh, so that, that's how, uh, uh, as the bourgeois press would say, authoritarianism r rides on COVID-19. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, it can be used as, uh, as a pretext for uh, taking strong measures against the people, uh, you know, it goes this way. Take the Philippine example. Promises were made to the people. Uh, we lock you down, but uh, don't worry. We give you your food, etc. You are going to have mass testing and, have, and, and all that. And then the, uh, the promises are not fulfilled. Now, because people are angry, Duterte uh, will first uh, uh, start to scapegoat, blame other people for his uh, failures and for his uh, criminal acts. Of uh, not doing what he was, what he promised to do, no. So you know, uh, you know, the the aggressor becomes, uh, me to say, the exploiter and oppressor become defensive, and uh, the, before you know it, he's already threatening to apply martial law, and uh, you know, he scapegoats the New People's Army, and he might because he's afraid of the people, he will really go, uh, he will really proceed in the. Uh, at the end, and he will really call, uh, he will all uh, proclaim uh, formally martial law. In fact, there is de facto, there is a facto martial law. Uh, he can realize his full scheme of fascist dictatorship. That's the, uh, that's the problem. How a, a, a crisis, uh, you know, th there is a multiplicity of crises. In the Philippines, you have already a socio-economic and political crisis. Now here, here comes the health crisis, and it becomes a good excuse for uh, pushing further uh, the scheme of fascist dictatorship. All right. Next question, Tito. Um, this is uh, what do you think would be the situation after the pandemic, and uh, what then should be the task of activists and revolutionaries? Oh, you know, the social, economic, and political crisis was worsened. And um, exactly when Duterte should be pleading for uh, uh, 
and reconciliation and peace negotiations, uh, his tendency, he's a butangero, uh, his tendency will, uh, would be uh, to show, eh? uh, to show force, uh, to intimidate the people. So uh, th that uh, makes the situation explosive. Um, he thinks he can intimidate the people and he can actually kill people, but by doing so, he arouses the people. He arouses a, uh, a storm. He brings forth a storm that can engulf, uh, that can overwhelm him. And that storm is the mass movement. Uh, you know, the same thing that uh, Marcos did, he will do. Uh, he uh, is inclined to do. And um, uh, it was the undoing of Marcos to underestimate what the mass movement can do. All right. Next question naman dito from our comrades, Anakbayan Toronto. Uh, Tito Joe, can you discuss why Canada is characterized as a junior imperialist? And how is Canadian imperialism distinct and si also similar to U.S. imperialism? There is a long history behind that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when the U.S. has an enemy, uh, a war to carry out, Canada is always uh, uh, supportive. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, let's take in uh, let's take the current. Uh, uh, conflict between the U.S. and China, uh, you know, uh, so the uh, the official daughter and official of the owner of uh, is it uh, Huawei, yeah? and he's she's detained and held hostage because that's what the U.S. Uh, wishes, and so they they cooperate in historically and in current terms. Um, uh, they cooperate against, especially against third parties. Uh, they do have some contradictions, differences and contradictions, but uh, they they are un, they are um, uh, you know the leaders can sometimes uh, can sometimes uh, speak differently from each other or even insult each other. No, um, but. Uh, uh, oh, when the big things are taken into account, especially against a third party, they unite. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Canada being the smaller power, it's called a junior partner. All right. They have follow-up question, Tito. Um, because uh, Toronto, they are organizing community aid for our Kababayans who are struggling during the time of COVID-19, many of whom are migrants with precarious status. How do we go beyond merely acts of charity and seek to actual arouse, organize, and mobilize the masses? Well, of course, uh, uh, you don't just provide the material help possible. <clears throat> the important thing is the relations are developed. And, you know, uh, ideas are exchanged also in the process. And so uh, the concrete relations are expanded. And, uh, of course, the thoughts and uh, moral values involved in the uh, concrete cooperation would develop. It's important to have mutual understanding. In fact, the best understanding possible is proletarian internationalism to make the world revolution. But <laughs> so in other words, you can, you, you can go up to any, uh, uh, any level of mutual understanding. But, but of course, be, uh, uh, there are many things. Uh, by way of uh, mutual thinking and uh, uh, agreements that uh, uh, you can develop aside from the concrete. But you know, uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the cooperation in terms of ideas and, uh, and policies, uh, they, they have to be substantiated eh, by concrete forms of, uh, uh, of, of uh, cooperation. And naturally, um, there are times when a much richer country uh, is expected to be of more help to a poorer country. So uh, that, that those are, uh, and then of course, uh, there are Filipinos in Canada, so they should be able to uh, work 
closely uh, in their own interests, of course, but uh, uh, if they happen to work somewhere, they should join the unions and, uh, and uh, they should take up issues of the Canadian people because they are also affected as they are in, in Canada. So there is, it's not a one-sided kind of charity. Filipinos can also help uh, uh, their uh, uh, Canadian brethren uh, right. in Canada. Right. Thank you, Tito. Our last couple of questions that we have, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll soon be end this uh, discussion, nor this webinar. Uh, so um, another question, Tito Jo, from um, an activist on UP Deleman. Uh, may mga kasama po akong new Marxist. Ano pong tamang pagtato sa gaya nila? Do we trust them? Eh, yung neo-Marxist, equanized literary term yan. Usually, tinamaan yan ng yung neo-neo. Uh, kung madala, madalas siya ni equanized tinatamaan ng subjective idealism or uh, the most serious uh, authority they have is uh, Gramsci, no? Eh, si, I'll give you a piece of analysis of Shyam, uh, of, ano, uh, uh, oh, oh, Gramsci he has very excellent ideas, okay, and um, he, he has the idea, uh, but they, they, he, there is one idea uh, uh, that, uh, because of the limited time, for instance, he speaks of a coercive period in the revolution, and then uh, next comes the persuasive period in which, you know, the organic intellectuals are further developed, etc. But anyway, I'll take up the two terms. Coercive period. Certainly in the process of overthrowing the ruling class, that's certainly coercive, but it's a very positive thing, constructive and positive for the proletariat to take power for itself, okay? Right. So, and then, <laughs> uh, of course, uh, while you are at the business of uh, uh, overthrowing a power an exploiting class that is still uh, uh, sitting on the throne, you have to be nice and persuasive to the people who we would like to join you uh, in the revolutionary enterprise, the revolutionary project, okay? And then, naturally, when you are in, uh, you are already in power, you might, you must develop what uh, you may describe as civil society. Yeah? Uh, you must know how to handle correctly the contradictions among the people. You must be able to distinguish contradictions um, among the people uh, from contradictions with the enemy. So um, for a socialist society to exist, uh, uh, you have to be nice to your own forces and to the people. And you will, all, you will always have to be tough eh, on the enemy and that wants to eh, destroy you. Um, while you have no power yet, uh, you have no state power, and when you have state power, your class enemy will try to uh, subvert or even to make an aggression against the socialist state. So, uh, you know, this idea of simplif this simplification by Gramsci, oh, there is the coercive period, then followed by the persuasive period. Uh, it is as if, you know, the, uh, if, you, if we know materialist dialectics, uh, you know, um, it's a positive thing when the proletariat and the people take power. The negative part is turned against the, the enemy. And that's all the way. That's what you do. Uh, you're, always on the, uh, you're always on the constructive, positive, and persuasive side in building your forces against the class enemy. <laughs> I hope that uh, I have focused on uh, Gramsci because... Often, oftentimes, you know, the new left uh, and the new Marxists capitalize on some of his works. There are many, there are so many, you know, among the, the, among the subjective idealists, you know, uh, there are so many of them. Uh, the, the, the thinkers, the, uh, what you might call, uh, <laughs> and there are all sorts of subjective idealists. Uh, in uh, Frankfurt, in uh, in London, in Paris, in and in Vienna. Right. <laughs> Last question, Tito, mula sa uh, masa. Um, 
uh, ano daw ang maiaambag nyo to solve, uh, why can't you just cooperate with the Philippine government? And anong maambag nyo to solve the issue? I think it's a troll question, but it seems um, this man uh, really needs an answer. How can you help solve the COVID-19? Personally, ano daw po yung may aambag nyo? I mean, mm -hmm. ah, in my personal case, what I can do, I, I try to follow up. I follow up uh, uh, the developments pertaining to COVID-19, whether uh, it is an issue, scientific issue, of which uh, about which I have to uh, respect uh, uh, investigation and findings of scientists, and of course uh, uh, some amount of uh, uh, investigations done by people, no? Who uh, who may who may say, oh, uh, COVID-19 originated in Fort Detrick, no? Uh, or uh, let's say the Chinese in originated it in Wuhan, no? And and you know then uh, as part of the conflict of the U.S. interimperial inter conflict between China and the U.S. They uh, they um, accuse each other. Then there's a third view. There's a third view that oh it's a uh, uh, zoonotic, but you know even as a nine um, as someone who's not in the natural sciences, <clears throat> you know when something is done in the laboratory you use animals. So you know how do you get out of the zoo zoonotic uh, trail? <laughs> so anyway, uh, but anyway, um, I. My focus as a political scientist has been on the impact and consequences of uh, COVID-19. Um, All right. I think... Ah, um, you ask the question, why don't, I, why don't I have the government? Is that yes. the question, Rich? Yes, yes, for Tito Jo. It includes in the uh, question. The... Well, uh... uh I went along with the, I, I gave the advice to the NDF negotiating panel to recommend to the NDF to agree to a ceasefire. Um, since uh, uh, Duterte uh, is, a, is a fellow is not so trustworthy, it was a good thing that um, uh, the UN Secretary General made a call for a ceasefire uh, by way of uh, supporting uh, the common fight against COVID-19. So we, uh, the, the, N the CPP gave the order to the NPA um, uh, to uh, have the, uh, to, to uh, have uh, its own ceasefire. And uh, uh, so Duterte made his uh, declared ceasefire on March 19, and then uh, CPP and NPA made their ceasefire uh, on March 24. No? Now, uh, Duterte uh, uh, has, uh, uh, has um, uh, doesn't want to extend the ceasefire that uh, he has declared unilaterally. So it's the, it's the NDF and uh, together with the CPP and NBA that, that is maintaining a uh, longer kind of ceasefire. But anyway, uh, the point there is uh, there is an attempt to uh, of the revolutionary movement despite Duterte. There is an attempt uh, to show uh, that there should be national unity to confront the common problem of COVID-19. <clears throat> All right. I think... Um yeah, may um um do you have do you, uh, do you have uh furthermore to say, Tito? Uh -huh. uh, I what I would like to say is uh, um, uh, you must have already read the uh, charges of the uh, reactionary government, uh, the invent uh, uh, 
the anti-communists there uh, daily invent, uh, you know, false surrenders and, for, and then uh, lately false attacks on supposed uh, government personnel delivering, uh, delivering help to the people in connection with COVID-19. Now, those are lies, and uh, Louis Landoni and Fidel Gawili have already um, uh, made uh, the uh, replies. So, um, I think uh, um, as a result of COVID-19, the people will be so much outraged that uh, they cannot uh, uh, they will not be able to stand further uh, uh, the Duterte regime. All right. Thank you, Tito, for answering uh, the questions of our audiences. And uh, I think that concludes our uh, discussion for uh, tonight. Diyan po nagtatapos ang ating discussion. Another productive day of learning while serving our quarantine sentences, mga mm -hmm. kasama. Apakasayang mag-aral at matuto. Stand by next week. May 3, 2020, same time, same platform. Our next discussion would be imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, the, um, with the context of the growing imperialist states and organizing within. Make sure to note this on your calendars and click that notification bell on our page and our group, um, our Facebook group, uh, National Democratic Line Online for updates. Ano? Um, Tito, may um, sasabihin ka pa ba? Uh, me message, uh, audience? Um... Well, I, I, uh, I thank uh, you and everyone else uh, in, in the management of this program. And of course, uh, 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 we thank, we together thank uh, uh, our listeners. And um, I would urge them to um, uh, continue participating uh, in this uh, program uh, by listening and uh, uh, raising questions uh, oh, in, in, for the purpose of uh, uh, enlightening everyone and uh, guiding well what actions we can do uh, in the service of the people. All right. And a few announcements. Uh, thank you, Tito, for uh, that uh, message to our audiences. A few announcements before we end this discussion. I know, um, so uh, we are um, asking for the people to sign the petition that was organized by International Migrants Alliance uh, Europe. This is a petition um, that uh, details um, to regularize and uh, began ng full citizenship rights uh, all the workers and migrants refugees displaced peoples and frontliners here in Europe during this pandemic uh, this calls to um, ensure uh, their access to the social benefits and um, workers rights and uh, social uh, their social benefits uh, they're calling sa pantay na access sa mga pro program pang kalusugan at um, social aid para sa mga migrant, refugees, displaced peoples, and uh, during the term of this pandemic. So um, they were also calling for the karapatan uh, of the family reunification for all the migrants, refugees, and displaced peoples. Pangkalahatang karapatan sa tamang kalusugan at dekalidad na serbisyong pangkalusugan para sa mamamayan at hindi para sa kita. We also, um, IMA also calls the bailout of all the workers um, not for the corporation, uh, multinational corporations. Um, they are calling to sign and ratify the ILO, International Labor Organization, Domestic Workers Convention 189, na naglalayong protektahan ang karapatan ng mga domestic workers. No? Um, International Migrants Alliance is a grassroot uh, formation of the organization that um, consists of immigrants, migrants, refugees, displaced people, and uh, this, uh, this, this information can be seen on our page, Anakbayan Europa. And uh, you can see the link there. And please, please help us to, impl um, to share this uh, petition so we could protect and fight for the rights of our fellow immigrants uh, and migrants uh, here in Europe and uh, around the globe as well. So um, uh, also, um, our organization in France is calling for a donation. Tulong para sa mga migranteng Pilipino sa Pransya. This fundraise, uh, fundraising event is a relief uh, package 
of food uh, and uh, social um, aids for our migrants in France, um, um, especially the ones who have been affected um, with their jobs. Uh, no, you could also see the link in our Facebook page, um, uh, Anak Bayan Europa. And in, uh, in here in the United Kingdom, naman, um, please support Kanlungan Filipino Consortium um, with the um, GoFundMe. So you can see the GoFundMe link in our uh, Facebook page. Um, they, they are um, providing you know, foods, um, fighting for the undocumented workers, temporary accommodations. Ayun. Um, so let us support and um, let us also support our local uh, organizations in um, in our um, European countries. So we, that truly helps um, Filipino migrants. Ano? Ayun. So um, abangan natin no next yung uh, yung ang um, susunod nating educational discussion May 3, 2020 same, same time and uh, same platform. No, you can see the updates in our page and our F, uh, FB group. No, please invite more comrades, your friends, your families, and lahat lahat ng nasabahe nyo uh, para mag-aral at matuto ngayong panahon ng COVID-19 habang tayo ay nakakwarantino. No? Uh, dahil ano pa ba, mas masayang mag-aral kapag tayo ay mas marami. Muli, maraming salamat sa pakikibahagi sa aming diskusyon. Ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Tito Joma, at pagpalayang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Wawas ko, magdaluyong Narito ako, para ang galat na lang